Hey there Dev Squad Vertus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Mech Combat tutorial series. Within today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the player's death. So once the health gets down to zero, what we're going to be doing is having our robot explode and then once it's explode, it's going to bring up a UI menu which is going to let the player see exactly what wave they're on and press a button to restart the game or go back to the menu. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Now if you want to see what this UI screen is going to look like at the end of this video, take a look at the image that I've got displayed on the screen now. So we're going to be breaking this video down into two parts. First and foremost, you're going to have the gameplay side of things where the player is actually going to be exploding, it's going to be disabling the movement and all of that good stuff. And then we're also going to have the UI side of things where we're going to be getting that image displayed on the screen along with the buttons. Now, what we're going to do is start off by creating a def function, which is going to be stored within the third person character. So open up your third person character and inside of here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to functions and we're going to be creating a function with the name def. And from this, we're going to be doing a couple of things. Now, as part of this def sequence, the first thing that we're going to be doing is toggling the visibility of the player's mesh because we're going to be having this to explode. Now, once we've done this, what we're going to be doing from here is we are going to be spawning a particle at the player's location. And this particle is going to be the explosion. As for the location, the rotation and the scale, we're just simply going to get the actor's location at the moment and then we're going to be spawning it in there. So if we drag that and drop it into our location with the emitter template set to explosion, we are going to be good to go from there. What we need to do from here is we are then going to get a reference to the character movement component and we are going to disable the movement. So once the player dies, they are no longer going to be able to move around. And then what we're going to be doing from here in terms of gameplay, the last thing we're going to do is simply get a reference to the player controller. And then as the player controller, what we're going to be doing is set, is set show mouse cursor. And we're going to hook this up to true so that it is going to allow us to use that mouse cursor. So that is pretty much everything for the function for now. We still need to create the UI widget, but if we were to activate this, we would have a pretty simple def sequence. Now I'm going to go ahead and compile this. And what we need to do now is essentially when we're doing the damage, we need to check to see if the player's health has gone below zero. If it is below zero, then we're going to tell it to run at that def function. Now in terms of where the damage is going to be dealt, that is going to be inside of the projectile for the turret and also inside of the spider bomb blueprint. So open up your spider bomb blueprint to start with. And at the bottom here, you should have a sequence where we are essentially reducing the player's health. Now, what we're doing here, as you can see, it takes away 0.3, which is 30% of the health. Now we've got this code at the end here. We're going to move this along. Now between our set health and our cast to the game mode, what we're going to be doing is running a branch check. And this branch check is simply going to check to see whether or not that health has gone below zero. If it has, then we're going to do that death sequence. So condition, we are going to do float and we are looking for less than or equals to. Now the value for A over here needs to be our third person character. So as third person character over here, we are going to get health and we're going to hook this up to our A. Our B is going to be zero. And then if this is true, then what we're going to do is as third person character, we are going to use our def function. So if you just type in def, dragging it out from as third person character, you can call that function. So on true, we are going to run straight into that. If it's false, then what we're going to do is just carry on as normal like we did before. So let's go ahead and test this. I'm going to hit compile. I'm going to hit play. And then I'm going to jump into my scene. And what I'm going to do is let these little explosive enemies, the, the bomb bots rather, I'm going to let them blow up on me and I'm going to let them take away my health. 
Now, as of right now, we haven't set up any functionality for the turrets to kill us, but the bomb bots should be doing it. Now, what you will notice is the health is below zero, and then when it explodes, it should be calling it. But at the moment, it's not, and we've got to take a look at the reasons for that. Now, the reason why it's not exploding there is because your distance is not set up correctly for this bot. Now, if you remember when we set up the damage for this, we have the get distance too. Now, at the moment, this is set to zero for me. The distance I'm going to use is 500, and then with this, we are going to leave the rest the way that it is. So, what we're going to do is add first person character, we're going to get our health and we're going to put it into here. Now, instead of doing it the way that we just set it up, you can also just take the return value of this and then feed it into here the way that I have done. So instead of casting to the third person character, getting the health and putting it in, you can just take the return value from that reduction in health. If I was to go ahead and hit compile on this now, and then hit play and try this again, as you're going to see, this spider bomb explosive is actually going to kill us and we're going to be running that death function that we have just created. Now bear in mind, I'm going to need to get the attention of this little bot here and I'm going to have to let him explode on me. So if I let him get close enough, he's going to start animating and then at the end there, as you saw, we exploded and we did all of that good stuff. So with that being done now, what we need to do is essentially just refine that death sequence. What you did see there is that the hammer was still being displayed. So if we open up our third person character and then we go back into this death sequence, all we're going to be doing is not only are we going to be toggling the visibility of the mesh, we're also going to be getting a reference to the hammer mesh and then we're also going to be putting this into the toggle visibility as well so it reduces that hammer too and that's going to work. Now once we've done this what we're going to be doing from there is we are going to find our blueprint for our turret for the projectile so that we can set up the damage for that. Now what we are going to do is simply find that projectile and finding that projectile is quite simple. Just go to it in your content browser. For me, it's underneath Mech Combat and then Blueprints. If I open this up and we go to the bit where we're doing damage, once again, if we move this along and with this return value, we can run a branch check. So run a branch check and then we are going to do float less than or equals to bottom is going to be zero and A is going to be our health. If it's less than zero, what we're going to be doing is as third person character, we are simply going to be calling that death function. So if it's true, call the death function and then carry on with the rest of the stuff the way you would normally. If it's not, just carry on and that's it. And that is absolutely everything for our death sequence. So now if we go ahead and hit play and then we go and jump into our game, both the explosive bot and the turret bot is going to be able to kill me. So as you see, when it starts hitting me with these projectiles and my health goes down to zero, as you can see there, we are now dead and we are good to go with that one. So what we're going to do is now just further refine that death sequence. So if we go into our death sequence, what I'm going to do is at the very end here, I am going to set game paused and that is essentially going to stop all of the movement in our level if we tick paused. Now also in addition to this, for our visibility, for our hammer reference, we are going to get the mesh inside of this as that is the bit that you really want to be accessing to toggle the visibility and we're going to be putting it into there. Now before we set this game to paused, what we're going to do is we're just going to have a simple little bit of wait time in between. And to be honest, it should be all good. You should see that particle effect pretty much straight away. So let's go ahead and test this now. Let's get one of these little turret bots to start shooting at me. He's seen me, he's shooting at me and boom, that is it. Game over. It's going to finish just like that. Now, if you want to, you can add a delay in here. Now, with a function, you cannot have a delay. So if that is something that you do want to do, then what you would need to do is use a macro instead. 
but for now I am happy with the way that this works. And from there we can then move on to the UI side of things. So what we're going to be doing is creating a widget. So after we set this game to paused, we're going to create a widget and we are going to be adding this to the viewport. And then with this, we now need to create a widget class, which is simply going to have the button and all of the graphics for the game over screen. So we're going to be creating a new widget blueprint and we're going to give this the name game over. We are then going to go back to our third person character and we're going to set this to game over. Hit compile and then open that blueprint up and we can start working. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is add in a, black, a background blur. We're going to set the size to 1920 by 1080 which is going to be the full size of the screen and then we're going to set our offset to 0, 0, 0 and 0 just like that. Then with that done we're simply going to put in some text and this text is simply just going to say game over just like that. Now if you have any issues with parenting you can just fix that in the hierarchy tab and you're then going to be able to move all of this stuff. So what I'm going to do is take my game over text, I'm going to make this nice and big just like that and I'm also going to capitalize it as well so it looks nice and clean. Game over and then what we're going to do from here is we are simply going to be adding in a couple of buttons. One, two, and then we're also going to add two pieces of text which is simply going to say the wave number. So for the first piece of text, you, you survived until round and then semicolons just like that. And then the second piece of text, what we're going to be doing with this is setting this to zero zero by default, scaling this up and then just moving it to the right of that text. Now what you also want to do is make sure your anchor point for all of this is set to the center so it's all going to be staying relative to each other in terms of position. So just like that. Now to get this to be dynamic and actually show the real round number, what we're going to need to do is create a text content binding. For that, create the binding and then we're going to cast to the third person game mode which stores the wave number and as third person game mode get wave number and then we're just going to be feeding it in to the return value which is going to give us a string. Minimum integral digits we're going to be setting this to 2 and the object wildcard is going to be get game mode just like that. Hit compile and let's go ahead and make sure that all of this works. So the text should work, the button doesn't have any functionality but we'll take care of that in just a moment. So one, two, three, we're almost dead and then once we're dead here we've now got our game over, we've got our buttons and with these buttons what we just need to do now is essentially just program them to take us back to the main menu. So open up that game menu screen. The first one is going to restart the level. So with this unclicked what we're going to do is run a console command. So execute console command is the blueprint node you're after. And with this, we are looking for restart level, just like that. And that's going to reload the map and let us play again. If we go to our second one, what this is going to do is we're going to have this take us to the main menu. So with this, we are going to open a level and with this level, the name for this, we are going to be using the main menu level. So if you go to open level, you can see that it's just main menu. Just paste that name in there, main menu. Go ahead and hit compile. In my design view, what I'm also going to do is anchor this to the center of our screen so it's properly centered. And then I'm just going to make these a little bit bigger, just like that. And we're good there. I'm also going to put two pieces of text in there to tell us what each of these buttons do. So what I'm going to do, first button over here and this is just going to simply say return to main menu and this one is going to say play again. Now if you guys have 
a image that you want to use for this, you can and you can make it look a lot prettier in the same way that we have done for the rest of the user interface. But for now, I think this is going to work perfect. I'm just going to justify this to the center, I'm going to make it nice and big, and I'm going to leave it just above the button like that. Same goes for play again. I'm just going to have that just above that button and try and keep all of this centered if you can. Now with our background blur, you want to put this back into place, offset top, bottom, right, left, all of that, set it to zero, zero, zero. The Z order, we're going to set this to minus one. So it always shows behind the rest of the content on our screen. And then with that, you're just, a, it's just a case of making this look pretty. With this background blur, you know, we can change things to adjust the blur strength. So we can turn this up, we can turn this down. I'm going to go for a nice little value, which is, you know, relatively nice. So for now, I'm just going to go with say four and that should give us a decent little blur and then hit compile and we can try this. And that should be the end of our game over screen. So let's go ahead and check this. Let's get ourselves killed by these enemies. And just like that, it's game over. We can then play again by pressing the play again button. And then also we should be able to return to the main menu also by pressing the second button and give it a couple of seconds to load. And here we are at our main menu. So with this game over screen, make sure everything is aligned and anchored to the same position. Otherwise it is going to look a little bit strange. If you want a episode on getting this to style, so I'll make some graphics for this to make it look all pretty. Let me know if that's something that you want in the comments section down below. But for now guys, that is everything. Let's go ahead and test this one last time with that anchoring done. And what we should have now is a pretty solid looking game over screen. We've got our blur, we've got our buttons, and with these we can play again or we can return to the main menu. That is everything for this episode. Once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.